Ready? Hi, you guys. No, no. <laughs> can you see? Can, can you see my hand over here? Yeah. Okay. When you see that, you start talking. Okay. Okay. When you see that. All right. Here we go. Hi, you guys. Ginger Cook here, and then our premiere tonight, which is going to be really fun on eight by ten canvas. We're going to do some. Pretty yellow wildflowers uh, that kind of like look like maybe buttercups or tulips. I'm not I'm not a real flower expert, so I couldn't really tell you. But I, you know, and a and a butterfly. I just thought this was a charming scene. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Follow along with me in just a second, and we'll get started. And the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Okay, so. The, uh, I think that sometimes, um, you know, especially if you've got a lot of snow out there, maybe you just want something that's sort of warm and happy and fun. So that this was my idea to paint an acrylic, uh, so these in acrylics these flowers and and um, I really was very fond of how this came out. So if John, if you'll be so kind as to put the video down on the Oh, we're down. We're down. We're down on it. You can yeah. see we've got this little yellow butterfly, and he, he likes the flowers, too. And uh, the background was just really sort of a multicolored blue background. And how you would do something like that, let me just show you this real quick. If you just paint something blue, any old blue background will do, okay? And then what I want you to try, and I want you to try a round brush this time. I want you to try that, okay? Try a little round brush, fairly stiff. This one is made by Bristolon. And it's a number something. You can always get paint all over the numbers. I think it's an eight. I think it's an eight, too. All right. So, and you hold it like this. Watch how my hand is. Hold it like that. And, and move not from the wrist, from the shoulder. All right? So what you want to do is that you're going to dampen the brush, which means when you, we say dampen, that means if you have a wet brush, then you wipe it off on a towel. Yes and yes. Okay? And let's just take some... Um, a little bit of ultramarine blue, let's say a little bit of white. Let's just mix that on the palette right there. And maybe just do a little circle like that. Just like this. See how I'm doing that? Maybe we'll add a little more color to it somewhere else. Let's just, just put a little bit of this color in here. We're going to add so many colors to the background. Now, don't get too crazy with that. Maybe a little bit of phthalo blue. Just kind of round a little bit of white. Here's some phthalo blue. Uh, that would be green shade if you are uh, painting this with um, Liquitex. Liquitex. I don't know, you know, they do that. And, and red shade on the ultramarine blue, right? And then maybe a little bit of, um, just a little bit of phthalo green and white. And maybe a little yellow oxide. And just let's, let's just put some green here. A little bit more of that. Just keep making the circles. This is kind of roll them around like that. Just uh, have fun with it. Put some music on. Um, like that. Maybe I'm going to have a little more green and say blue like that. Maybe I want a little bit darker over in here. It doesn't really matter, but I want you to make some sort of multicolored background like that and dry it. And then dry it really well. And then what we've got is you can either freehand this on or you can, uh, which is a pretty simple picture. But uh, if not, you can um, go ahead and just uh, uh, do it, you know, just trace it on. But you can kind of see, well, there's my multicolored background. Can you see? We've got it. Maybe I want a little more greens. But you don't have to worry about that because we'll add those later. So don't worry about getting an exact color. It's just something like this, all right? So let's just put that out of the way. I'll put the brush away. Now here is our... We, we're doing something new on our website now. It's the... Um, we've got a brand new website and we are adding what we call... Um, uh, traceables as well as the reference photo for our stuff for, and it's over there in our in our uh, we're going to put the link below and it's a new website just just kind of for this and for something else we'll talk about a little bit later but here's my here's my uh, my outline drawing of this so what you want to do is just take some Sorel transfer paper or you can chalk the back of a, a piece of paper if you printed it out right and um, Let's just, I think I'll just take a sheet of white here, and um, I'll just put this, well, first off, I want to secure the transfer paper. So, um, uh, it's, it, we've set, this is exactly 8 by 10, 
So I want to just cut the edges real quick so that I know that I'm in the right spot. Have them right like this. I'll just cut it up so when I when I tape this down, it kind of is going to stay. I'm just going to cut cut around the paper. Ha there. All right. Let's put this out of the way. Okay. So now it takes you back to grade school, doesn't it? Yeah, it takes you back to grade school. You can see that Ginger is real great with scissors, <laughs> but you don't have to be great with the scissors. Um, and you want to tape that down. At least in one spot. Now this is a very, very simple. I think you could all freehand this in, but I just want to show you real, qu real quick how you do it, um, like that. Maybe tape it down like this. Some wide artist tape. Then you stick the, the transfer paper underneath, and you want to put the the correct side up. And you have uh, it backwards. Oh, here you go. No, you had it right. You had it. I had it right. Yeah. That was getting pretty worn out, though. Yeah, it? I need some really better stuff. That, 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 that's why I'm ready to... We better can, talk to the uh, procurement yeah, we, office. Yeah, so let's first off, let's test to make sure it even transfers. Does it? I can see it barely, though. No, I can't see it at all. So it's not it's not working at all. Well, it's there, but it's too light. It's too light. Do so you this, have a yellow? Um, I don't know that we have a yellow, John, and I think this is why you always must test. I think this white has had it. Um, I've got maybe a dark blue. Let's try the dark blue. I've got a red over did here. That. Let's try this dark blue and see what that does. Okay. Again, going to test it. Yeah, the dark blue shows up. Dark blue, okay. Okay, but I think this white has sort of had it. It's time to get some new. All right, so basically what you want to do is go over, when you're transferring on, go over the line quite a bit. Don't just draw it on there. You notice I'm going back and forth on this line. I'm not just doing a line here. Does that make sense? I'm going. I'm, I'm a scribbling on it. Okay. And that's particularly if you're not on a real hard surface. Okay. You want to go back over the line. So again, you probably don't need to trace this whole every little bit on here, but you know, get kind of figure out where your flower pl placement is, and um, and and kind of secure all that. Okay. But go over the, again to check every once in a while and see if it's even showing up. If it isn't showing up, then then go back over it again. Or you could put a piece of cardboard on the back of your canvas and uh, just give see. it a little extra support back there. Yeah, absolutely. Let's say let's see. Is this kind of doing it? That's kind of doing it. And kind of this shape up here like that is my shape. Now that ought to be. Enough did, did you get information, the in? huh? And the butterfly. Got to get him. We got to get our butterfly in here like this. And again, this is canvas is not stretched really tight, and the butterfly is barely showing up, but he is. So we're gonna just again double check to see. It doesn't hurt to to see if you've got it. If it doesn't, if you can't see it, then just go over it again. Let's see how's that. There's our butterfly there. He's there. I think I'm kind of missing part of this flower. Yeah, I didn't get this part of the flower. This is why I always tell you to do a pen. Don't do a pencil. You can push so much harder with a pen. And uh, let's see how we did there. Okay, so I don't see the outline of this. Yeah, the back outline of this. Let's just make sure this petal is here like that. Did you want to do the um, the butterfly's front wing and you know the, the body? I did. I, oh, in, in here like yeah, this. Oh yeah. Thing. Yeah, you didn't do those two. I didn't do those two. No. All right. Good point here, like that. All right. Well, this is actually part of his wing right here. This line right here. It's not his body. The body part is his body. Oh, that's then, what, yeah. So that's the one that's laying it, down. Yeah, yeah, he's laying down like this. So this is kind of hit where he is right here, like that. So th that's him. This is us. Let's see what's what's here. I guess that's it. I guess that's it. Should you got be, that, well, you know, got a leaf. Yeah, I, you I know, I mean, you you obviously ought, ought to be able to to get the rest of that. But that's basically. Okay, you're not trying to duplicate something. No, here. you're just saying you want it just enough to get this. I'm just going to get this out of the way here. All right, you've got just enough to get a light outline. And then if you're not sure about that, what you can do so you can see it is um. Just 
if you need to go over it with chalk, this isn't really showing up that well. That chalk isn't doing anything, so never mind. All right, so we've got our standard colors, and I'm going to take a, a large brush here, and I'm going to take some white paint, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint this first petal in here like this, and then the same thing with this one. This is a little angle brush. I'll paint the petals that I can easily paint white, okay, like that, because yellow paints best over white so we're going to say that we know we've got a um especially if you want your yellow to really show up and yeah pop. you want that yellow to show up so we're going to say that there's this white petal here and the same thing here like that we'll just put these in here and there's no water on this brush by the way it's just a dry brush so now we're getting the paint isn't being diluted does that make sense we're not diluting the paint because we've um, we haven't put water on it. All right, here's a little petal here, and I'm leaving just a little tiny space so I can kind of see the little cracks between the between the flowers and the petals. And this is coming up like that. If you do that, this is one of the things that uh, I encourage people. I had somebody send me in for personal art coaching a poinsettia, and she was having trouble getting the the reds to really pop. If you guys remember, we did right before Christmas on YouTube, we did a really pretty red poinsettia. If you're, you really want red to pop, I'll prompt, tell you what you want to do is paint it white first. Um, things are always brighter painted over white. So if you have like some, a flower, and you want some petals to show up more than others, paint those white first and then um, see what happens. And see if you're not, um, See if that uh, doesn't brighten up the yeah, colors. Yeah, it'll just brighten up the colors. That's just and again, good. now, reds need more than one coat to really get them red. Yeah, red really does need more than one coat to get it. And the same thing with this um, this little butterfly here. You see, he's pretty simple, actually. Everybody thinks he's real complicated. He's got this little funny, fat, round little body right here. Okay? But there's your... There. Make sure that the, the, his wings are rounded. Okay, like that. There we go. So there's our butterfly. And then I'm going to take some white and yellow now and come underneath here like this and put in something a little bit lighter as part of my background. Um, why I'm doing it. This is a little bit lighter area here, a little bit of light, just some white and yellow. Okay, as we start to, we can play with the background. That's key, sir. You know, so we've got, while that's drying, let's add some of our greens. Does that make sense? So, um, what do we know for sure? Well, we know that we've got some darker greens around here and in here. And... Uh, and we've got some lighter greens kind of over in this area, but there's a little bit of, I think we've got that, still have enough light yellow. There's a little bit of this light yellow, so as long as I'm still on it, just a little bit of this light yellow over here too. Not as much. It's going to go right next to the, the stem. So I'll take this and take a little phthalo green, a little yellow oxide. Could be yellow ochre too, don't panic. If you don't have exactly yellow oxide, it's very similar. And I'm going to start adding some greens to my background like that and just maybe come on up here and let's add a little bit more phthalo blue to that and maybe darken this up here like this I'll start adding some greens to this background going to go around the petals and this is what's going to give you the contrast for the painting is just um, remember wherever there's a light there's a dark so if you want something to show up that's not showing up currently then put something, a dark and a light next to each other. Okay, and I think I want this background up here a little bit darker. See, I mean, that's why I told you don't worry too much about what you painted here, because you were just going to, this is all something that kind of gets layered. Yes, yes, and yes. But it's it's a good, it's, this is good practice. Ha, I, I think what happens is, is that people get very uh, frustrated when they're painting stuff, because if they don't look, it doesn't look exactly like the tutorial and then somehow they think they failed. It doesn't have to look exactly like the tutorial. 
but it is nice if you can match the colors. Now notice I'm adding a little white to this green right up in here while this is still wet. I want this a little bit lighter. Maybe I like some of this background we've got here. There we go. Just so where else could I add a little bit of this light green? Well, this is still wet up here, so if I add a little bit of white to that, what would happen? Well, I might have some little light area. Very nice, easy to do. A little bit of phthalo green, a little bit of ultramarine blue now, make that a little bit darker. Let's just darken this corner. When you darken a corner, what, you, what, what you're saying is, is that you're kind of forcing the eye in toward the flowers. I know we've got a flower petal right here that we... Forgot to paint in, but he'll be all right. I know he's there. I'm going to put a little white with this. Say right around here, I want this a little lighter. And this is a good practice on blending and sketching stuff in. And again, don't worry about if you don't have it exactly like mine. What I want you to try to do is just work on lights and darks. If you can do that, you're in good shape. You see how we're getting all these colors in. And maybe what you put come up here will be much nicer than what I did. And that's okay, too. Um, if you're inspired to paint this, this is all dark in here at the bottom. And then what I've got is um, the dark, um, you know, lines for my stems here. See, see like this? There's the stem on this flower. Here's the stem on this one right here coming this way. And I can put those in as we go. Kind of blend this out. Now this is where some water can be handy. Now I'm going to put some water on the brush, wipe it off. And now I'm going to just feather out some of these colors. Because if it's wet, like this, see, I can uh, then rinse the brush. And I can smudge these colors together just by um, holding the brush a little bit flat. And kind of, it's, it's, it's a very interesting way of making all these all these color changes out of focus. Okay, and then you rinse, rinse your brush and do it a couple times because you're basically what you're doing is, for instance, like in an area like this right here. See this hard line? Are you right there, John? Yes. What you're going to do is you're going to just smudge, um, it. smudge it out just with a little water. And, and basically what you're doing is erasing it. And I think what I want there is a little bit of blue. I want to suggest the sky's coming through here. So let's see, I want a little more white than that. So I might come next to my butterfly here, put a little blue, maybe down here too, and just put a little blue in here, and wipe the brush, and just sort of smudge that out. Just smudge the edges out. Because, I mean, have you ever had somebody walk in your house with muddy feet, and they tr track it all over, right? Yeah. Well, what you're doing here is that if you go right in the middle of the color that you're trying to blend, you're tracking in all the green. So the secret to this, ha ha, here's the next tip. The secret to this is to um, uh, is to learn how to, um, to blend by not going into the color itself, but always blend out the edges. Oh, just smudge out the edges, and then the color is fine. You see how I did that? I'm going to do that up here on this, this petal right here. I think I want Something a little bit, all right, now here's the stripe line here like that, right? Now, I'm going to rinse the brush, wipe it off, squeeze it out, rinse it out. Now, not doing the middle of this, I'm just smudging out the edges. You see how that works? This is called, you're just feathering it out, right? So the, the darkest part is right there, look at that. And, you know, where else might you want a little blue here, maybe in here, like a little bit of blue in here. Now this... Yellow is pretty dry. How will that work? Well, I don't know. But let's put a little bit more white with the blue. Say, I want just a little bit of blue up in here. So I'm going to rinse the brush, get the blue off of it, and uh, maybe just take, now it's just got water on it, and I'm just going to smudge those edges out. You don't have to be too perfect. Just smudge them out. Maybe I want a little blue on this side of it, too, this time. Pull it this way, around there. And that's basically kind of how you do it. Now, I want to introduce a little more of this kind of olive green color. So I'll take some ultramarine blue and yellow and white. I want a little bit more of the olive green color. So I might come over here like this and introduce some of this back in here. Um, 
it was kind of cool. You know, the one thing, a nice thing about uh, doing some of this type of painting here is that we're doing um, in a premiere is that if, you'll, if you're watching this after the premiere, read the chats because I'm answering a lot of questions. I love doing premieres because I'm right there typing with the audience and I'm answering questions that normally don't get answered. You know what I mean? I can see what you're, I can see what you're um, uh, writing. And so, you know, even though if you're watching this as an after, uh, after effect, um, you know, after, after the effect. premiere, after effect, yeah. After the effect <laughs> of watching the premiere, yeah. I like okay, that, so, an after effect. Yeah, okay. So, that I also had a little bit of orange. This is a new color I want to introduce to you. And it's uh, called uh, Cad Red Light. Uh, this is Cad Red Light. Well, and, but in acrylic, it's called, uh, yeah, it's still called Cad Red Light. And this was uh, uh, the painting that Put this was called. Put it back where you had it. Acry acrylic. Yeah. Ac acrylic. Uh, acrylic. It's a French company. French company. And this is Cad Red Light, which is a very, very light orange. It's a new paint that we're experimenting with. This one, my daughter Cinnamon, you know, who's formerly known as our currently known formally. as the Archer. Currently known <laughs> as the Archer. She keeps formally. I know. Has she well, given the, it up? No, the Archer for there. So you put a little of that in there too, and that little orange in there. It just sort of just a hint of just the hint of some some orange in this uh, picture. It's all kind of just in here like that, and I'm going to suggest that perhaps there's a. Uh, Another petal over here that's just kind of hiding back in here like this, but we're not really talking about it. Does it make sense? So just suggesting a little bit of color right in here like that, just a little bit. Okay, so there, just suggest there might be a flower there, just all, 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 all out of focus. Now back to our greens. Let's just, as long as we're in these dark greens and we did them, right? Uh, we want to put a, just go ahead and put a few of the dark green um, leaves on the fl flowers. And I've just got ultramarine blue probably and phthalo green is a good color combination for that. I'll do some more up there, but I want to just sit there and say that there's a couple of little leaves right here, and then maybe I've got one. That's going up this way, like that, and back here. And I'm just going to suggest some quick brush strokes here, kind of dried on, and just that this is our darks down in here, like that. And this is all very quick. And maybe I want a little bit of this dark over in this corner here to force your eye back in up this way. Just make it a little bit darker. Okay, just again, what what you're doing is you're building up on the on the darks, and let's take a little bit of water and kind of fudge that out. There you go. See, so just sort of blend that out. The same thing here. You can just sort of blend that out a little bit. Okay. So that's how you layer a background to get this. So so listen, let's review. We 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 started with something like this. Traced, traced on the picture or, or freehanded it on, painted the petals white, and then started moving around the picture adding lights and darks. That's certainly one way to do it. Now I'm going to be going into yellows and I'm going to start with a whole brand new brush because I, I, without washing my brush with soap and water, I will still have a lot of that color on the brush. And I don't want that. So I want another angle brush here. Uh, Let's see, I don't have a real wide one. Did you look in oh, your oh, coffee I do. cup? Oh, coffee cup. Up on top. Oh, yeah, it's here it wash. is. That's what yeah. you go back to. Yeah, okay, here's a nice clean one. All right, so let's take a little bit of white and uh, yellow. Cad yellow medium, a little bit of white, the titanium white. And I want to say that that's the top part of this flower up here like this. And I'll add a little bit more of the yellow and a little tiny bit of the of that light orange color. Come on down like this. Put this um, uh, petal 
See, I'm going to wipe it off and just use the back of the brush and smudge that out. See how I'm doing that each petal? You have to kind of do it one, one petal at a time. If you don't, what's going to happen is that um, it'll dry before you can do any smudging. So let's just say here's some yellow right here. Yellow oxide will make this one a little bit yellower. Now I'm going to come up here on this flower here. Now this would not be a bad place to dry if you're not sure about it. Uh, this would be a good, you know, this would, wouldn't be wrong to dry the background before you tried the rest of this, yeah? So let's do, um, we got a little bit of this kind of, or this orange color, and we're going to just, we can mix right there on the canvas. So let's say make this one a little bit darker right here, okay? And the same thing with this one. There's a little bit of white and yellow. Let's just paint this out. Easy, right? There. Okay, yes and yes. Now, let's do this flower up here. Same way. Take a little bit of white and cad yellow medium. We'll do this one back here. Make this one a little bit lighter. Okay. These don't these ones have less blending, which is why I'm painting them all at the same time. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to go back into the the um, that lighter orange color. Got too much paint on the brush, I'm going to wipe it off. I know one one lady wrote and said, I think a couple people have said it. I'm always afraid of, of wasting paint. So once I get it on there, I use it. Well, here's how you're going to waste paint. You're going to paint this silly painting over and over and over again <laughs> because you keep screwing it up because you put too much paint on there. So you're wasting more paint than you can imagine, okay, at this juncture. So that is, that is illogical. Ooh. I'm going to put this, take a little bit. We didn't paint this one yellow, but we're going to do a little bit of cad red and medium and yellow. And put this other petal up here like that and bring that down. Here's this darker color right here. And we've got a little bit of dark up in this area, just a touch on this part. Now, because the yellow is light, if I want this darker than what I've got, I'll have to dry it. But I want to get as far as I can with this first. Here's this. Again, wipe the brush, too much paint, and kind of feather that out. I want this a little darker, so I'm going to go pure cad red here. Push and lift up the brush. Push and lift up the brush. See what we're doing? Push and lift up. So there's this dark red right around this petal here. We're just pushing and lifting. Pushing and lifting. All right, little cad red medium. Now, same thing here. We're going to push and lift, push and lift. Push and lift. Push and lift. Airplane taking off. Yeah, lift. And then here we're just going to bring it back down like that. And the same thing here. We want this darker on the inside right up in here like that. And we've got a flower. And I think that's really kind of cool. Now we're still back into the, um, this is dried enough where I'm back into the darker reds. Now this is cad red medium. I'm going to say here's some darker reds here. Again, I'm going to come here and push and lift up. Uh, push and lift up. Put paint on both sides of the brush. Lifting up. Okay, and same thing here. I want something a little bit darker in that corner. So as we paint this, okay, as we put this flower in, I'm going to rinse that brush pretty well because I want to come back into the yellows and um, come back into the cat yellow medium and white. I'm going to go ahead and paint my butterfly yellow. I like this butterfly because you, usually you just see the wide um, angle on them and where they, they're all spread out and he's still flying which I think is kind of cool. So he's going to get yellow and then this flower here, this bud is going to get yellow. 
has an open jet. And we'll take a little bit of yellow oxide on this one and darken the base up here like this before we get too far. Yeah. And maybe take a little bit of white here and uh, just a little bit of titanium. Too much paint on the brush. Let's just go pure white. Okay, because that will make it go and spring a little bit of a resistance here. There we go. Now, where else could we put this white color? Maybe right up here, like this, on this petal. Let's just play with this a little bit, maybe on the outside of this one. We want to show that that's a little lighter. So you can go back, and we can dry it too. You could, but you definitely can go back, and you know, add your lights and darks as you need them, as you feel like they, they need to be showing up. But see how this is just turning into a very very nice simple painting. And by doing it a couple times, here's the advantage of painting something a couple times. And it, what you want to be able to do when you're painting something a couple times is to You'll 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 worry less about the brush strokes and you'll simplify stuff. But you'll go over it a lot less. And again, you'll simplify things much more than you would have the first time you painted it. But you're, there's a tendency to want to overwork things the first time you do it. Kind of you know you're not sure if that's the right brush stroke if you really wanted to use that one. Let me put another pedal right here like that. There you go. And just. You know, you, you think you do, but you're not really sure. Let's just put another little pedal right there like that. Okay. So you think you think that's exactly what you want, but gosh, is it? So then it gets a little confusing. So uh, when you do it the second time, you're pretty pretty more you're much more confident about where you want to put stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna take my glasses off now. But I want to just take a moment and dry everything. I think I've got to the point where it really needs to dry. So let's do that. Hi, this is Ginger Cook. And as a professional acrylic artist and art teacher for years, I can promise you that every, every advanced student that was able to paint this painting in the, say, the Thomason Page style of painting um, was a beginner at some point. Whether you were five years old or 60, it doesn't matter. Everybody started somewhere. And we have now want to introduce you to a new website that John and I have created called Beginner Acrylic Artist. Because we have found that if you have the basics down in painting, then something like this that we may never imagine you can paint becomes so easy you just don't know how that could happen. So if you were hoping to be able to paint a still life and understand how to do a layered background, maybe do something more detailed and advanced like this, keep in mind that the, many of the artists that um, are in our current Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting started with the basics. And we have now created this Beginner Acrylic Artist website and compiled our best, most successful beginner lessons that we found help the most. And in cat we categorized it, for instance, uh, if you want to paint florals, um, here's a Van Gogh floral that, um, you know, we teach you step by step. And um, maybe you always wanted to be able to paint something like this. Well, how do you blend it? How do you get this background? This is one of the uh, intermediate lessons in our Beginner Acrylic Academy, but there are steps to get there. And we want you, if you start at the beginning, from everything from washing your brushes to tutorials and mixing color, blending, how to get images on a canvas, and try these and follow these tutorials, I think you're going to find that when you get to a, a you know painting fur on an animal, um, I, I, many, many, many of you saw these ducks earlier this year that we had um, in our academy. These, we went ahead and got the best lessons that we could find from the never painted before if this is a big app, total beginner website 16.95 it's at a price point where there's um you don't have to uh, there's no annual uh, fee it's just 16.95 quit a month quit anytime you like and if you're ready for some personal art coaching or some more advanced lessons 
when you got to get to the, you feel like you're ready for some help or you want to paint some more advanced lessons, come on over and join our academy, Fine Art and Acrylic Painting. We invite you to do that. In the meantime, um, Beginner Acrylic Painting, I think, is beginneracrylicartist.com, I think, is, is going to be the new go-to place where new artists will learn their craft. How we doing? Pretty good? Looking good so far. All right. So, I mean, I'm looking at the two of them together. Let's just do that for a second. Okay. And I, and I, I, do you see how, because I've done it the second, do you see how much kind of clearer this one is? This one I'm working on now. Because it's, there's just fewer brush strokes involved in painting it. But, you know. So, what we want to do now is put in some of the darker greens again, where they go. I want to do that. And I know that, for instance, right under here, I had a dark green coming out this way, one of these uh, little petally things here, like this little, little. I had some dark green coming out this way from the flower, like that, kind of separated that out. And I had some real dark green under here, between these guys here, which made it show up. And then we had some dark green Oh, first we had some lighter green. Let's start with the lighter green. Let's put a little yellow here. We had some lighter green on our um, uh, bud, like so. Okay, a little bit of lighter green, and then we can come in with the darker green and come on up with just a few of the greens coming up on the side of it. And then let's pull some uh, leaves down from here, like that. Okay, so just you don't need to say too much, but that there it is. Going to go over this again a little bit. Here's our stem, and uh, let's see. I think we had something kind of dark coming up this way too. Yeah, a little bit of a dark something right there. And, um, ha! Ah. And then I want a little bit of dark under this butterfly here so he shows up. So I'm going to just kind of flatten this out like that and just do something like this so he shows. Again, I want him to show up. So I just did a little bit of dark right there. And... Now we're going to rinse the brush, and what we want to do next is take a little bit of this orange and this very, very light orange and some yellow, make even a lighter orange, and do a little bit on the butterfly here like this. Uh, let's just touch him a little bit here. And then I want some more white and yellow, really light, and I want, his, I want him to be even lighter than we had him. So he's... He's kind of multicolored there. There we go. Just make him just a bit lighter than he was. Yeah. That's kind of cool. As long as we're into the light, let's play with the light on our... Um, see if we need to lighten up any of our yellows here. Um, just white and yellow. Let's see. I think I might want to lighten up this petal right here maybe right like that and then down here I think I want a little bit of light here on this petal see I'm sort of it's playing with the lights now you guys are turning on and off the lights yes that's what our big plan is turn on and off the lights where can we do that you know what can we do to to, 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 to make that happen okay so we're, we're kind of um see how about a little bit light right there about a little bit of the light color right here on this there going up here not too far doesn't that make a difference i mean it's just so interesting to me it makes make such a difference and do we want to put any light down in here back in this area, 
we lose some light, so we need to put a little light back next to this stem, maybe thin it down, like that right there. Um, your painting is going to be different than mine because depending on how you you know put things, but maybe I need to lighten up this right here next to this leaf so I can do that. There, see, just a little bit of light, kind of just it, it gets everything gets to be glowing a bit, and that's what's so pretty. And the same thing right up here where this butterfly is, we're just going to lighten up something. I need a little bit more white paint with that, but. Here, let's try a little zinc white. That's always very effective. I'll lighten that up right here with a butterfly. Very touching this. Just lighten this up a little bit. So there's our there's our butterfly, and let's put a little bit more green underneath him so he we have some contrast. Maybe something dark right here. A little dark green right there is good contrast too, right around these flowers. If we do that. Then they show up. You see what I just did there, and I maybe I'll come in here like this, with that with that green, and define that petal. Just such, just wherever there's a light, there's a dark. I see where I need a dark green leaf right here. Okay, right there off of this one. There we go. Yeah. Okay. There. So now the last thing we're going to do is uh, two things. We're going to make sure we have all the dark reds we want. So one way you can get a, you know, here's some cad red medium now. And I might want it a little bit darker on this side. And I might want it a little bit darker right here. And here on this petal. And how about right here? Do we want it a little bit darker right there? Okay. So there, just a little bit more contrast can be effective sometimes. Um, but I would say that's pretty much, I would say that's pretty much all I want to do to those flowers. They're glowing really now. So I'm going to dry that and then I'm going to do a Posca pen on the uh, butterfly and finish them. Cool, right? Yes and yes? Yes and yes. Okay, so, so, see, run, 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 run. So, so that's why people say you guys should have a camera with you 24 hours a day. It's always constantly running. Well, you should run that and ask me that again. I think people, we can add this, right? Run the camera again. Camera's running. What am I saying? Well, John, I think we've got to welcome people to our, um, to our uh, Facebook club, you know, because we're getting... The words getting out, people really, I tell you, I'm looking at John here. Maybe I'm looking at you, but I'm looking at John. John, we've got to be telling people how much we appreciate the fact they joined our club. What a neat place it is to be. Don't you think that's a great idea? I think it's a great idea. Do you know how I know that it's a great idea? How do you know it's a great idea? Because brilliance happens in this room. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs> the queen's wife. The Queen of Color is waiting. Bye. Bye. What do you expect it to do? <laughs> I don't know. Did you stop it? <laughs> Should I stop it? Probably so. Bye. Bye. How many bye's are you going to give us? <laughs> Tell you, turn off the camera, sweet cakes. <laughs> How do you know it's not on? How do you know it's on? I don't know. So you can be sitting there and be a total fool. <laughs> I don't have to have the camera on to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Are you through? Yeah. Bye. Could you turn it off? And we're back. Okay, so I'm going to use a brown Posca pen. Now, if you didn't have a Posca pen, you can use a brush. But you want to shake them up really well. Hit a little bead in there. Bead. Little ball bearing. Yeah, a little ball bearing bead here. I'm going to just kind of. All right, so I'm going to sit there and say that um, he's got 
a little line coming here like that. And then he's got these little round dots on the outside of his wings. Do the first row. Because when you do the second row, the trick is, I was really looking at this butterfly, the trick is you sort of, you stagger the dots. They're sort of, you sort of stagger them. And then he's got some little straight ones here. And he's got some straight ones under here, like little dashes. Now, I think I used a black pen before, but I rather like the brown. If you don't, I, between the two, I think the brown is a little more subtle. So, I mean, personally, I like the, the brown a little bit more. There's the line on top of his head. Okay. And now we've got a little line like that, curves. And then we've got one right where the heart comes in here. This curves around like this. Curves that way. And then there's your butterfly. And if you're not sure, here, take a yellow Posca pen. I love Posca pens for small detail like this. Because I think it's really pretty and I think it makes a big difference. Here, we're going to... Alright, so I'm going to just say I want to I want him a little lighter on his tummy right here. So I'm just going to do a Posca pen like that right there. And maybe I'm just going to do a few dots of yellow right like that in a couple places. Because these are very bright, okay? So I see he's there, but he isn't really. And if you're not sure, you can use even use on your petals. Don't outline every one, but if you feel like one little petal isn't showing up enough. These smudge just like paint. This is acrylic paint in a pen. So it's these, a different brush. It's you're a different cheating. it's a different brush. You're not cheating and you can smudge it out, right? So okay. if you feel like you didn't quite get it, but you would like to have gotten it maybe a little more detail, look what you can do with that. And that's kind of tough to do when you're um with a, with a tiny brush. And a lot of you guys, there, let's just do this like this. See on that one? And then maybe, just don't go get carried away with it, please. Just, it's subtle. And I'm going to say this came around like this. And now I've got my flowers, and I think I'll take the same pen, and I'll sign it over here, right like that, as long as I've got the pen going. And... Because I've, this is the second time I painted I love this one, but I really like this one because it's a little cleaner. Does, does that make sense? It's, got, it's just a little bit simpler, a little bit cleaner. The one thing you might ask yourself is, we've got a lot of orange and yellow, and the purple is the complement of yellow, and turquoise is the complement of orange, and we have neither of those uh, colors in our picture. So since we already have phthalo blue out, I'm going to suggest that we take a little phthalo blue and white. It's already done now, so you don't have to do this if you don't like it. Then a little tiny bit of yellow in it. So make this sort of turquoisey blue color, yeah? Make this turquoisey blue color and wipe off the brush. And maybe where there's a little bit of orange, Let's see if I can find this. I need more white in this. A little bit lighter. Let's see, is that going to be light enough? Here we go. Where it's a little bit, um, a little bit of orange. Maybe I'll just add a touch of this turquoise color. Um, not much. I don't have to add. I don't have to add much. Just, just suggesting it. This is kind of the stuff. There, just. And I like the light here too, don't you? Ooh, I think that's pretty. Wow, that's really pretty, isn't it? And it just, it, wow, it didn't take much, did it? Didn't take much. 
little tiny bit around there. That's the kind of subtle stuff you can do when you're painting. And it makes for a really nice artistic rendering of the painting. Let me just come up here and do a little bit of this up here. There. I'll go back with a little bit of the ultramarine blue because I still like that sky color. Whoops, too much. Oh, it just didn't blend that enough. There, I want a little bit more of that color up in here too. Your sky color. So there you go, you guys. That's our that's our picture. Now I, I wanted to take a second, um, and I didn't um, get to show you some of the other things we were doing. So, um, John, you didn't have that, right? Well, no, but we can do it now if you like. I want to do it now. I want to take a minute and show you some of the stuff we're doing before you sign off. I want to show you what's coming up next. Some stuff that we've got going here. Or some stuff that may have already been aired by the time this airs. Yeah, we don't know when this is airing, so yeah. yeah. So, I want to show you some stuff that we've got going in our academy and some stuff that we've got going here. Um, let me just move this real quick. So if you enjoyed, if you love painting this, if you thought this was really nice to paint, this was a fun, simple thing to paint, um, I want you to think about um, painting some more stuff. Now, um, our koala bear will have aired. Um, this was one of our, this was a, the Australia Strong uh, painting that we did right before we left on our trip. And we still have the t-shirts available for that, 100% of the proceeds. After expenses from our end, we were sending to a ch charity in Australia. For it's the animals. A, for the animals. For the animal rescue. Okay? Animal rescue. So we think that's really important. If you like animals, um, that's really nice. And as many of you know, we have an Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting. Butterscotch is um, one of our fe featured tutorials step-by-step -step in our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, which comes with personal art coaching. Um, one of the things we encourage people to learn to do is your basic paintings. And this was a Cezanne painting, and it's just a pine tree, but it's a great example of how to do lights and darks. It's a very simple basic painting we have in our academy. It shows you how to do lights and darks. You're going to want to do that. And then um, we have every, every month we have something called the ultimate lesson, the ultimate tutorial. This is these uh, pink roses in a green vase. Wait till you, that's again, Academy, uh, a challenge piece. Wait till you um, uh, watch that. This is fantastic. So another good reason to join the Academy. And, and that uh, one's being presented differently. So Yeah, that's a, that's a challenge piece, something we've never done before. So again, if you haven't uh, had a chance to look at our koala and on YouTube, please do that. And um, uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it. And I hope uh, I'd give us a thumbs up. We always appreciate those. And I hope you guys enjoyed the you know, what yellow wildflowers and the butterfly. We'll see you guys next week. Fun, yes? See you all next time, everybody. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Well, you guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet or um, maybe you two can learn to draw that, you know, we... We have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs. But I thought it would be fun, as long as we were doing it, to put a commercial in for ourselves. So here's the, here's the commercial from me to you. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial and wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I.